praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that we can look to you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for you are our great high priest. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the blood. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the blood applied. It has saved our lives. It has ransomed us. We are now the righteousness of God in Christ because of your precious blood, your wonderful blood. Thank you that you are wonderful, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your blood. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we can partake of the communion. The communion is with thanksgiving. We can have thanksgiving. We can be thankful because of your finished work, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your body. This is your body broken for us. And thank you, Lord Jesus, that your body was broken and crushed and scourged so that our bodies can be strong and healthy. Thank you that your body is the bread of life. Your body is health. Your body is strength. And thank you that we can eat and receive divine health, divine strength, divine medicine. The same faith that you use when you drink a blood pressure pill and you know it's going to help for blood pressure. The same way when you eat the body, know that it's going to help for any disease and any problem. If you need energy, thank you, Lord Jesus. Your body gives us energy. If we need um, help with our blood pressure, your body is perfect blood pressure medication. Thank you, Lord Jesus. By your stripe, we are healed and made whole. You are our good, good shepherd. And we relax and we live stress-free, worry-free lives. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we are healed and made whole. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we don't have to stress about anything because you are our good shepherd and your, the good shepherd gave his life for the sheep. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your blood. Thank you, Lord, that your blood has forgiven us of all our sins. Your blood has made us the righteousness of God in Christ. Thank you, Lord, that we can drink your blood and know that we are in a new covenant. A covenant of grace. Unmerited, unearned, deserved favor. Undeserved favor. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we are highly favored. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your precious, precious blood. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So tonight we are continuing from where we left off with the conference, you could say in a way, because we know who we are. We know whose we are. We know what we have. And we know what we can do. Because we are who Jesus says we are. We have what Jesus says we have. And we can do what Jesus says we can do. But... We can say and ask for all these things, but we need to also receive. And receiving is a state of being relaxed. You can say RR. To receive, you need to be relaxed. To receive, you need to be rested. And who's someone that receives? Someone who knows they are righteous. You know, ours, righteous people receive. How? By being relaxed, by being rested. And we know that we have a righteousness of God in Christ. And we know that we are sons, beloved sons, beloved daughters of the Most High, of our Father God. Amen. Hallelujah. So if you think about it, we are part of the vine. Okay, so Jesus is the vine. He's the root and the stem. And we are the branches. Now, how do branches receive life? How do branches fight things? How do branches live life? They just receive. Branches just, just receive the whole time and they bear fruit. Yes? But when you are stressed, when a branch is stressed, what happens? They stop the flow flowing to them. You can almost see it like there's a direct connection between you and heaven. There's a direct connection between Christ in you and your soul and body but when you are stressed you tighten like let's say there's a rod flowing from heaven to me and this rod is like a golden rod but when i get stressed when i take on stress and when i take worry 
that rod gets squeezed and then it minimizes the amount of life and supply flowing to me. But when I relax, I let go, it opens up the supply flowing to me. If you think about it, the, I think, I'm not sure if it's the Latin or the Greek word, but worry means to strangle, to strangle something. So you're strangling, you're stopping that flow flowing to you. So in order to have a healing revival, you need to have a worry-free revival first. In order to have a, a break-free or a provision revival, you need to have a worry-free, stress-free, a relaxed revival. Like we said, the word for healing, Rafa, is the same word for being relaxed, Rafa. So when you are relaxed, healing flows. When you are relaxed, provision flows. When you are relaxed, all these things flow. Because you are not stopping that vine life flowing to you. Because you are a branch. The same way you are a sheep. What does a sheep do? A sheep is relaxed. Sheep doesn't worry. The shepherd has to take care of everything. Same way if you are a lily. What does a lily do? A lily just grows. Why? Because we are rooted and grounded in love. So when you are rooted and grounded in love, what happens? You just shine. You just shine in the sun. And then what happens? The sun, because lilies like the sun. Okay, lilies love the sun. And what's the sun? Rays of healing. Rays of life. So when, you, when you're a lily, you're stress-free because that's what it means to be a lily. Say, I'm a lily. I'm a lily. And a lily is stress-free. Or it doesn't stress. There might be stresses coming, but you don't take those stresses. You are relaxed. And lilies love the sun. Say, I love the sun. So I love the sun, S-O-N, the sun, the son of God. And this sun rays are healing rays. Amen. But why? Because I am stress-free. Okay. Praise the Lord. So go, going on that, you guys can turn to this page. The one that's got like the two sides on one. So let's quickly go through this. So soaking in God's presence. So it says you have the other half of the conversation. So many times people are speaking, speaking to God. Well, it, uh, please tell me you are speaking to God. If you're not speaking to God, then start speaking to God. But, okay, many people can speak to God, but we also need to listen. And what's listening? Listening, listening is hearing what's being said and what's being meant by what's being said. But listening intentionally. Listening to what God is saying. And when you listen, you receive as well. So here it says, it any. So here it says, Jesus says, ask and you will receive. We're, um, so we're very good at the asking part, but how about the receiving part? If we are the ones who are doing all the talking, it's really a one-way conversation. So soaking is the listening part of our conversation with Him. It's setting aside time to lie down and receive from Him. And also, what I want to mention is, I, I believe corporate soaking is also very powerful. It's, it's got a special anointing to it. Why? Because we two or three are gathered together in Jesus' name, what happens? The Lord is there. The Lord is there. The Lord is in the midst. The same way prayer is important. You need to pray the whole time. But corporate prayer is more special. Why? Because there is a special anointing. Where two or three agree. And they say it. And they agree on it. It will be done. But when you by yourself praying, the Lord hears you. The Lord answers. But when there is a corporate prayer, it is more powerful. Same way when there is corporate worship, it is more powerful. When there's corporate partaking of the communion, it's more powerful. So the same way soaking together is more powerful. Okay? And what is soaking? Just but my definition is being immersed in Abba Father God's love. Okay? So imagine there's just this, this dam or, this, or this, this love, like the ocean. What do you do when there's an ocean of love? You jump into it and you just soak in it. And that's why the Bible says to know the depth, the length, the width, the height 
of the love of God because it's you need to be immersed in the love of God. And when you soak, what does it mean? If I take if I take a piece of cloth and I put that cloth into something, I let it drench into that fluid. So the cloth becomes soaked, full of that water or that soap or whatever you're putting it inside. So we want to take ourselves and put us into the love of God. Be immersed, body, souls, be immersed with the love of God. Okay. So it's setting aside time to lie down. And why lie down? Because if you're working the whole time, if you're running around, if you, your mind is occupied with other things, what happens? You're not, setting it, you're not receiving as easily. But when you lie down and you say, Lord, I'm putting this time aside to receive from you. What happens? It's easier to receive from the Lord. So then it says, just relax. So the second point is, just relax relax why because we are sheep we are lilies we relax we are branches say i'm a branch i'm a lily and i'm a sheep so i relax okay one of the main barriers to encountering god is that we are simply trying too hard like i say when you try too hard what happens you stop the flow you, take, you, you are taking the, 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 the tube flowing to you and you are squeezing it. And then it doesn't flow. So we are trying too hard. But God's top tip to us is just relax. In Psalms 46 verse 10, he put it this way. Be still and know that I am God. Literally translated, this means cease striving and know that I am God. The way to know God is through peace and stillness. Like Elijah. What happened to Elijah? Elijah was waiting for God to show up. And there was, there was fire. And there was rocks, earthquake. And there was whirlwinds. There was a rock and roll band playing outside. But what? God wasn't there. Or it doesn't, it said it was, he wasn't in those things. But then, eh? small or soft and a whisper came to him like my dad talked about this morning whispering talking to god through whispers there god was in the whisper so the same way god is in the still and peaceful things well the holy spirit says he's like a dove okay so god loves gentle things god loves still things jesus is the lamb Worthy is the lamb that was slain. A lamb is, is a small, gentle thing. Hey? And then quiet times. So what have we got so far? We've got, we are receiving, we are listening. Okay? We are relaxing. So we are receiving, listening, relaxing, and we are in quiet times. So a peaceful environment on the outside helps us to come to peace on the inside. When we soak, we simply put on some quiet instrumental or worship music and lie down. At first, our minds will be whirring with thoughts. But we don't try and wrestle them. We just wait for them to settle. Submitting our mind to the Holy Spirit, meditating on the fact that the Lord is in our spirits. We believe He is right there with us. And like I said, corporately, where two or three are gathered, we know the Lord is here in the midst. And if we get distracted, we don't become frustrated. We just simply turn our attention back to the Lord. And that's why it's important that I asked if you guys could bring a pen and a paper. If you get thoughts that keep on like reminding you of things, so you can just write it down. Just write it down quickly. Or sometimes the Lord might give you a vision. Then you can write down the vision. Okay? Or give you a word of knowledge and you can write it down okay so next time you guys can can bring a pen and a paper as well or a book a little booklet okay quiet times then it's lying down so and when you surrender what do you do like in in, in the old olden days they, or when you want to uh, surrender something you lie down or you lift your hands okay that's why during worship, 
Raising your hands is like an act of surrendering. It's also an act of victory. If I want something, I'll go, yes, it's an act of victory. And it's an act of receiving. When you receive something, you open up your hands. So we have found that lying down is the best posture. It helps us physically relax and focus on the Lord. As we lie down, it's a statement to God that we are laying down our agendas. We are surrendering control. We surrender ourselves to the Holy Spirit. It may feel foolish and offend our pride. Soaking is an act of humility. And humility is knowing or saying who God says I am. And when you're soaking, what do you do? You are receiving God's love. Because God is love. He wants to give you love. So when you receive God's love, you become God's love, then you can give love. So think about it. If, you don't, if you're not actively receiving God's love, then when you need to give out love, you're going to get frustrated. And you're gonna, it's going to be difficult for you. But when you're actively receiving God's love, what happens? So you're resting actively when you're actively receiving God's love. And then you will actively be healed. So your part is to actively receive love. Jesus' part is to actively take care of all the other problems. Whether it's sickness, uh, if financial problems, or whatever. We will discuss that next week. Okay. So lying down. Then human beings, not human doings. Say I'm a being. Not a being, eh? But a being and not a doing. At first, we may have an internal Mary Martha struggle. You guys know the story of Mary and Martha? So we're, we're going to read it in the verses now. But it says, We feel like Martha that we should be doing something. But this is Mary time. Say, I'm a Mary. I'm a Mary. Not a horse, Mary, eh? Yeah, ma Mary Pat, yeah. Martha got caught up in the busyness of see serving Jesus. Mary got caught up in Him. So that's what we want to do. We want to be caught up in God's love. Caught up in li lying and lying down at Jesus' feet. Soaking is not about how much we can accomplish by our own efforts. It's about God's action in us. Being childlike faith. Soaking is a dedication. Say dedication. God, this is time just for you. Soaking is an invitation. Say invitation. God, do what you want to in me. So God, do what you want to in me. And like I spoke yesterday on Link FM. Many people say, oh, it might be God's will to do this, or it might not be God's will to do this. Listen, the most, like for people, it's sometimes difficult to know, oh, what's this person's agenda, or how sometimes this person is like this, sometimes not. But God is predictable. God is the most predictable person. Well, Jesus is, a, but God is a person. But God is the most predictable. God is the most predictable person in the universe, or in the existence, whatever. He's the most predictable. Why? Because He's given us the Word of God. And in the Word of God, He tells you what He wants to do. He tells you what He was willing to do. He tells you everything about Himself. So when you know the Word, you know what God wants to do. And you know what, what, what's going to happen. So God wants you to be healthy. God wants you to be healed. God wants you to have provision. So when you're lying there, what happens? You say, Lord, this is an invitation for you to do what you want to do. And He wants to love you. He wants to immerse you in His love. Because He says in His Word, Be immersed. Be grounded in my love. Hallelujah. Soaking is an expectation. What's expectation? Hope. Say expectation. So we have an expectation. Thank you, Father. For what you are accomplishing as I rest in you. Remember, when you are resting, then God is working. Okay? Say that with me. When I am resting, 
When I am resting, when I am resting, God is working. God is working. So we come to Him like little children believing that He has good things for us. If you then know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those that ask Him? That's Mark 7 verse, or Matthew 7 verse 11. Okay. Rest and restoration. So like we know, rest and relaxing, rest and restoration has got to do with praying in tongues as well. But we're giving the Holy Spirit a time to rest, to rest our bodies, to rest us. So soaking is Psalms 23. Eh? It's a Psalms 23 experience. Only a sheep can relax. Only a sheep can rest. So if you're not a sheep, we're giving you a chance to be sheep. Eh? We're giving you a chance to act like sheep. Eh? So soaking is a Psalms 23 experience. He makes us to lie down. You hear that? He makes us. He makes us. In the beginning it might be like I'm forcing myself to lie down. It's difficult to relax. Especially for some people who their minds are constantly busy. If they're not doing something, they feel anxious. But you need to know that we need to be sheep that can lie down. He makes us to lie down in green pastures. And He leads us by still waters. So still, relaxed, lie down. He restores our souls. And notice restores. What's in restore? Rest. So when you are resting, God restores. Say that. When I am resting, God restores. As part of the restoration process, we may find ourselves responding physically or emotionally. We might laugh, cry, or shake as the Holy Spirit works in us. The Holy Spirit might give us a vision or bring a memory to our mind that He wants to heal. So that's why next time bring a book or a pen and then you can write down the vision or write down the memory. Okay. And then ask the Holy Spirit, what, what does this mean? What are you saying to me? Often we enter into a deep rest. Okay, so that's why if someone snores next to you, don't go, this, what's wrong with you? you know, this is an intimate time. No, if someone snores next to you, they're in a deep rest. Okay, so don't wake them up. <laughs> Perhaps we may fall asleep, like I said. Even if we don't feel anything happening, by faith, we believe that the Lord is working in our spirit. So the same way when you worship and you lift up your hands, sometimes you might not feel anything physically, except your shoulders getting sore, okay? Or your neck getting sore if you're lifting your head, like some muscle pains, okay? But you're going to build bigger shoulders, eh? We want that also. But the same way when you lie down, maybe you might not feel anything physically, but the Holy Spirit works is working inside okay the Holy Spirit always yields from the inside out the same way when you worship you are worshiping from inside out so inside you're gonna feel that peace you're gonna feel that your emotions turning from sadness to joy or from depression to happiness praise the Lord abide in the vine what does it mean to abide to stay to stay. So the same way, we're going to stay in one position for, and it's not going to be so long. It's actually very short. I was surprised. I thought it's going to be an hour or something, but it's just 30 minutes, so it's very short. But we're going to stay in the vine. Remain. And what is one, what's one of the best ways to stay? To talk. So we, we've talked to God, but in a, um, in a conversation, it's a two-way, hey? You can't just be talking, you also need to be listening. So you, in the beginning, we're going to talk a bit, but then we're going to listen. Okay? We're also going to give time to listen. So intimacy with God is the key to fruitfulness in every area of our lives. As we become more aware of His presence in us, so do other people. Like we see, we receive love, we become love. Hey? Eh? We are receiving love, we become love, and we can give love. 
so we love people from love, not so that they can love us back. The same way when we give a gift, we don't expect them to give us something in return. And we don't expect them to be like, oh, thank you so much. If they forget to say thank you, which is rude, but if they forget to say thank you, it's okay because it was a gift. Hey? You weren't expecting them to have to say thank you back. Because we are loving from love. Because we have become love. As we become more affected by His presence in us, so do other people around us. By taking time in the secret place with God, we start to walk by the Holy Spirit in everyday life. We find that rather than striving to achieve things for God, He is building His kingdom through us. Not by might, not by power, but by His Spirit. It's amazing if you read Colossians 1 verse 11. It says that all the might, now imagine all of God's might, Wow, all the power, imagine all of God's power and all the glory is given to you, flowing to you. Why? Do you have patience? <laughs> Do you have endurance? You might be like, what? All the power, all the glory, all the strength is flowing to me so that I can do something amazing. No, so that you can be patient, so that you can have endurance. That's a, it's amazing, eh? Praise the Lord. So not by might, not by power, but by His Spirit. And the fruit of the Spirit is patience, endurance. Okay. How are we doing on time? Are you guys, you guys wanted to be lying down already, eh? We're almost done. <laughs> okay. So, but here's the key. So now we're going to get to the, the fun part, okay? The other part was also fun. You guys having fun? This is fun, eh? So how to soak in God's presence, the next page. Find a comfortable, uh, comfortable place to lie down. Okay? Allow the busyness of your thoughts to quiet down. Don't fight them, but replace them with God's thoughts. So if you're thinking about all the things you've done wrong, let's say, or whatever, just say, I am the beloved son. Of our Father God. And what happens? A son receives love. So you are receiving God's love. Say that. I am the anointed, beloved son of our Father God. The ladies must say daughter. Eh? Invite the Holy Spirit to soak you in His presence. And that's what we're going to do. Let's do that now. We're going to invite the Holy Spirit to soak us in His presence. So say with me, say, thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are with me. Thank you, thank you, that I am in your presence. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you teach me of my Father and my Lord Jesus. And also, when you're soaking, you can have an open posture, like open your hands up. That's how I like to do it, because when you open... What is it saying? I want to receive. Okay? But some people soak like this on their face. They still receive. But I like opening my hands up. Because an open hand receives. If I've got a closed hand, how am I going to receive something? So just the act of opening up gives you, it's like a posture of receiving. Yes? Then, pray and surrender yourself to the Holy Spirit. Mind, body, and soul. So let's, say, let's pray and surrender. Let's say this together. Holy Spirit, I give myself to you, my body and soul, my mind, my emotions, my will, my dreams, my time. Take control, Holy Spirit. I give you permission to take over, Lord. I will follow you because I am your beloved child. You know my path, Lord. Lord, Holy Spirit, I give you permission to uproot wrong thinking and wrong beliefs and wrong attitudes. So we are sheep. The Bible says the sheep follow me. Yes. Amen. Focus on the Lord's presence within you. So Christ in me. Christ in me. And, and I love that thing with, uh, I think, uh, Patrick, that, uh, that Saint Patrick said, he said, Christ in me, Christ above me, Christ beneath me, Christ to my right, to my left. 
in front of me, behind me. So the same way we are being immersed in Christ because Christ is love. Amen. Rest in faith. So faith is looking to Christ expectantly. So that's what we're doing. We're looking to Christ expectantly. And we are believing He is working in us. So even now, if you are stressed, you think, oh, I need to finish this business thing, or I need to do this task. When you spend time with the Lord, what happens? He's going to make whatever business, he's gonna, He can give you an idea, you know? There's many people that have had soaking experience where they soak in the Lord's presence, like businessmen, and then the Lord gives them an idea for their business. And then that idea gives them millions of dollars. Why? Because they soaked in the love of the Lord. And take as much time as you can. Try to give yourself at least 20 minutes to begin to relax and receive. So we're going to take 30 minutes, okay? And get up refreshed and full of the Holy Spirit. You can also pray in tongues. Praise the Lord. Just checking in because my mom gave me some things she also wants to say. Okay. Like my mom gave a testimony of people that she knows, that have, like in church, that will soak. Even if the band was playing or whatever, they'll soak because they're tired. Then they'll just lie down in the service and soak. And they'll be refreshed. So the same way now, even if you fall asleep, it's okay. But just soak in the Lord's presence. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And watch as God changes you and the world around you. Hallelujah. Because when you receive love, you become love. I mean, you can give love. And what? Love never fails. So how the world's going to be changed. Your wife, your marriage is going to change. Your the work, your business is going to change. Why? Because love never fails. So we're receiving love. Hallelujah. So you guys can go read the definitions of soak. But actually, let me actually go for soak. What does it mean to soak? Soak, the definition is to become thoroughly wet or saturated by immersion, to drink excessively, to become drunk. And that's why the Bible says become drunk with the Holy Spirit. Hey? Have you guys ever thought, how do you become drunk with the Holy Spirit? This is how you become drunk with the Holy Spirit. To drink excessively. You guys can even hold your hands like this and say, Lord, I'm drinking your love. I'm drinking your love. To take in, to soak up. Soaking is being immersed in Abba Father's love. To lie down. What's the definition of lying down? To place oneself or be in a prostate position. To, in order to rest. To accept without protest or opposition. A posture of surrender and receiving. And then quiet. What does it mean to be quiet? To be untroubled. And that's why, like I said last week, Jesus says four times for us in today's world, in the end times where we're living, He says four times, see that you are not troubled. Do not be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. So here we are being quiet. Eh? We're being quiet. We are not going to be troubled. And let not means you let not. So, Lord, you can say, Lord, I am actively letting not. I am actively seeing and not being troubled. I'm being quiet. So, thank you that you do something. Hallelujah. So, you are free from activities or distractions. Still calm. Rest. Rest means to relax from exertion or labor, to repose or sleep. A pause or interval. And listen. What does it mean to listen? To concentrate on hearing something. To take heed or pay attention. You are saying what is being said. What is meant. So if the Lord says something to you, what has been said? What did the Lord say? And what did He mean when He said it? And then wait. What does it mean to wait? Wait means to hope. Okay? To stay in one place or remain inactive in expectation of something. So it's hoping. Praise the Lord. And we've got a few verses here. Most of these verses you, you guys know. Eh? Psalms 23 verse 1 to 3. The Lord is my shepherd. Wow. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down 
Wow, He makes me to lie down. Say lie down. In green pastures, He leads me beside the still waters. Say still waters. What are they? They're quiet waters. Hey? Not troubled. Untroubled. He restores my soul. Say rest. rest. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Then Psalms 4 verse 4 says, Be angry and do not sin. Meditate within your heart, on your bed, and be still. So that's where we're going to be still. Okay? But don't sleep here the whole, the whole night. Okay? And we're going to leave just now. So you guys can't stay here on your bed. Eh? Then Matthew 11 verse 28 to 50 says, Come to me, all you, like we said, everyone, all you, who labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So Jesus wants to give you rest. He wants to give you rest. Hebrews 4 verse 9 to 11 says, There remains therefore a rest for the people of God. For he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his works as God did from his. Let us therefore be diligent to enter his rest. That rest. Lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. So he says three times, rest, rest, rest. Then Psalms 46 verse 10 says, be still. Say, be still. And know that I am God. I will be exalted above the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. But isn't it strange? It says, be still and know that I am God. Then he says, I will be exalted. So if you are being still, you are exalting God. Because you're saying, God, like Jesus, when, focus, quickly look to me, when did Jesus feel more like God? When Martha was serving Him, or when Mary was taking from Him? When Mary was taking from Jesus, Jesus was God. She was treating Him like He's God. But when Martha was serving Jesus, she was saying, Jesus, you're a guy who's tired. I need to serve you. He wasn't being exalted. Hey? So when, we are, when you are Mary, when you are, Lord Jesus, I'm still, I'm still and I know that you are God. Then what? You are exalting God. Hey? When you are Mary, you are exalting God. So yeah, be still and then you exalt God. Hallelujah. Isaiah 40, verse 29 to 31. He gives power. He gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, He increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. So Philip is in it. Is a young man. He sings. He is young. He sings. But those who wait. Wait. Say wait. And this wait here is hope. Wait. Those who expect, those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. And this word for renew means to replace. So you're saying, Lord, my little strength, I replace it with your strength. I replace it with your strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. But why do they get the strength? Because they wait. Because they are weak. When you are weak, you replace your weakness with His power. But when you say, no, I've got power, then what happens? You're not replacing it with God's power. Whose power do you want? Do you want your power or God's power? So what do you say? I am weak, so I want God's power. Eh? And how do you do that? You wait. So that's what we're going to that's what we're gonna do. We're going to wait. Hallelujah. Psalms 27 verse 14 says, wait. Say wait again. Wait. wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And He shall strengthen your heart. Wait. Say wait. wait. I say on the Lord. Then Isaiah 55 verse 1 to 3 says, Ho. 
Rio, oh, Lansen, oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Everyone who first come to the waters, and you who have no money, come, buy, and eat. Yes, come, buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Why do you spend money for what is not bread, and your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to listen carefully to me and eat what is good and let your soul delight itself in abundance. Incline your ear. Look, pull your ear. Incline your ear. Incline your ear and come to me. Hear and your soul shall live and I will make an everlasting covenant with you. The sure mercies of David. Like we know David means beloved. So we are highly favored in the beloved. Luke 10, verse 39, 41, and 42. And she had a sister called Mary, this is Martha, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha. But why did Jesus say this? Because Martha complained. If you're not resting, you're going to complain. Hey? And you're going to remain in that state of complaining. But we don't complain. We are gainers. Eh? We are Marys. Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled. Why is she troubled? Because she's not at the quiet waters, the still waters. You are worried and troubled about many things. But one thing. Say one thing. One. One, so it doesn't say two things. Doesn't say three things, doesn't say lots, it says one thing. So this is what people need to believe. We need to believe that one thing is needed. Only one thing. But one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part. She's chosen the one thing. Which will not be taken away from her. So think about it when you say, I'm going to do the one thing then what happens? It will not be taken away from you. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do the one thing. We're going to soak and be immersed in God's love, in Abba Father's love. Amen. And we've already said, we say, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you teach us about Abba. Thank you that we surrender. Thank you that we are relaxed and we let not our hearts be troubled. Thank you that you reveal yourself to us. Thank you for visions. And that you work. That you are working while we let go and we relax. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Awesome. Praise the Lord. So, since it's difficult to just lie down and listen to the words, if you can't hear the words... We've printed out the words that she's going to be saying. And then you can read through it. And even if you just read through all the words tonight, that's also okay. Or this evening. Okay. Awesome. Praise the Lord.